Italy, the birthplace of the Renaissance. As soon as he stepped into Florence, he immediately recognized the rich history in art and architecture. Our first part of our adventure took us to Florentine leather making. Florence is well known for producing good quality leather for hundreds of years. From tanneries along River Arno during the Industrial Revolution to Guccio Gucci of the 20th century. Florence also held a good reputation in jewelry making. Its most iconic spot for jewelry shopping is Ponte Vecchio, or Old Bridge. Back in the 13th century, the bridge had different varieties ranging from butcher to tanner shops. It was only until Ferdinand I made it exclusive to goldsmiths and jewelers in 1593. Ponte Vecchio has to be one of the most fascinating bridge I've seen so far simply because of its history. It was the only bridge along River Arno that the Germans did not destroy in World War II, and it survived a terrible flood in 1966. Now that the shopping part is done, we made our way to the heart of Florence. Piazza del Domo. Here we found the baptistery and the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. If you're asking yourself why the baptistery is outside the church, that is because back then people were not allowed to enter the church unless they were baptized. The baptistery and the cathedral share the same green and white marble structure, but they're different in architecture and artistic interior. St. John's Baptistery has a Romanesque architecture and Byzantine mosaics inside, while the cathedral has a more Gothic architecture and frescoes for its interior. Just like any adventure, we had to sit down and relax for a bit. In the core of Florence, everything you need to explore is within 15 to 20 minutes walk from one another. I was overwhelmed by how much we already explored in a few hours. If you find yourself out of breath and you need to recharge, restaurants and gelaterias are on every corner of the city. Accordions. A refreshing round of gelatos was what we needed, but we were still hungry for more of what Florence had to offer. We decided to go to Academia Gallery to explore the most celebrated Renaissance artist in Florence. This guy, Michelangelo di Lodovico Buonarroti. The gallery houses this guy, David. Michelangelo based David on the story of the battle between David and Goliath in the Old Testament. Other than David's relaxed posture, its head and hands are overproportionate from its body. Being a master of human anatomy, 
Michelangelo wanted to depict David as a man with strong mind and will. David was truly a masterpiece. But what caught my eye were the other sculptures, called the prisoners. These statues help you dissect Michelangelo's mind as an artist. Michelangelo believed that the sculpture already existed within the marble before carving it. He was simply chiseling away the excess. Since these sculptures are unfinished, they were never set free. Michelangelo now lays rest here in Santa Croce where Niccolo Machiavelli and Galileo Galilei are also buried. The church has 16 chapels. We had to be careful because there were four tombs all over the church. You wouldn't want to step on someone's grave. As we were walking along the graves from Michelangelo to Galileo Galilei, I realized that it was as close as I can get to these people who not only changed the world in their time, but also shaped the world I live in today. It was only our first day in Florence, and we already fell in love with the city. There was so much culture to take in, and history to discover. As I gazed upon the city of Florence, I couldn't help but admire its beauty. Whether it's the Domo, or Michelangelo's David, the art and culture that sparked the Italian Renaissance still echoes through the streets of Florence.